It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1836, recorded Tuesday, June 15th, 2021. Soapy situation. episode of the Gizwiz, Dickie D has a new product from Anchor. We get to see another what the heck is it, and I am taking over a gadget. All next on the Gizwiz! It's the same old show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease, under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and yellow. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. now. Now, and here he is, the gadget conductor, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing good. Doing very good. Excellent. Sorry. Excellent. Um, I did a little boating this week, and Ooh. I wanted to ask you, I sent you a little video, which mm-hmm. I believe you, you straightened out, mm-hmm. but has have you ever seen that happen before? Where? Oh, I haven't watched it yet. I, I. Oh, okay. Where? <laughs> so let's watch it together. Where uh, someone so... says, "Oh, you straight, you did straighten it out." Yeah. yeah. No, it does. Well, but when I sent it to you, uh, it is in horizontal mode, but it downloaded vertical, oh, yeah. so that how can yes. that happen? So what? So basically, what I think happened is, um, so every once in a while when you're recording, if the phone thinks so. When normally, if the phone thinks it's in portrait mode, and it'll record it vertically, and then if it thinks it's in you know horizontal, let it re- record horizontal. Um, and if you're in a situation where there's a lot of movement, sometimes right at the beginning of recording, it'll think, "Oh, I'm p- pointing this way." If the if the you know gyroscope or whatever is like pointing down, it'll start the recording. Um, vertical instead of horizontal, and then it'll just stay that way. Yeah, I think I said oh, the okay. landscape okay. versus. And, and we were on a uh, a moving boat, so um, well, it's a two minute video. Should we just do that? Yeah, sounds good. And then so we we're on the Hudson River. Before. We were out. Uh, I'm with Captain Eddie. We're out about two weeks ago. The boat was running really ragged, but the bottom was not done. Okay, and when I came down to the boat today. Hanging on the railing was, ta-da, dive tech, okay? These are divers who come and clean both bottoms right in the slip, so it's really great, okay? So now we're out on the Hudson, and we're going to see the boat should perform a lot better, and you'll go for a little ride, Miffy. And Eddie, you could just point that out the front, and... We'll go toward the bridge. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Top of the world, Ma. Except I don't like that hesitation. Open space. Free to yeah. roam. No free. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. It was okay. a stupid day on the. 400. Shoot up there for one second. This is very good. The engine's rated at 5,500, so we got 54. We're going 36 miles an hour. Right there. It's a little bouncy, and we don't have our uh, our gimbal for this. But anyway, I think you'll see having a clean bottom. My mother always said that. Have a clean bottom, <laughs> and you'll get ahead in life. That's it for the Hudson River. Captain Dick with Captain Ed. Bye. And then I just had a quick shout out the back. They also replaced the zincs, which you'll see in a minute. Zincs are called sacrificial plates. And there's a big, there it is. There's the new zinc there. So that'll get eaten away. The engine parts in the river, in the water. Nice. And so that's GW Bridge. And then I just do a quick turn around. And you'll see the marina in a second. Uh, that's the marine over there, those little white guys, and then that's just down river. Wow. What and a view. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah, it was a great day. 
And then I, I came back and came home and the guy opposite me called up and said, did you see the stunning news from the parks department? Uh Oh, he said, yeah, it is an, uh Oh, it, it's, it's shocking. Uh Oh, so he said, you better open it now. This is the news. The Marina will close <gasps> and all boats, all boats must leave the Marina by October 31st. And the Marina will be closed for four years. What? What? Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're going to rebuild the Marina. And the note said, as much as we tried, the contractor said, there's no way they can rebuild the Marina a bit at a time that everything must be gone. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, a lot of people live there and this is the middle of June yeah. and you're only giving them like four months to find a place to put their boat for four years. That's uh, insane. That is insane. <laughs> so there's going to be a meeting of boat owners Thursday to sit because, because the most aggravating thing is everybody has to be out this October but construction begins 2023. <laughs> so in other words, the marina will sit there. Empty. Empty for one year. So how? <laughs> I know. That's crazy. It is crazy. It, 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 it's just nuts. I, I, anyway. I, so I'm not you know, familiar enough with how it all works. So you, you, how hard is it to find a spot to park your boat? And you know, how f hard is it to find another place? Well, the, the problem is, uh, there are a lot of boats on the Hudson river. Strangely, because of the pandemic, it was one of the best year for boating manufacturers ever. Right. Most manufacturers sold all their boats because it was a way for families to be together and right. safe because they're on the water. <laughs> social distance from everyone else. Right. Uh, so there's more boats on the, on the river than ever. And now this comes like at the worst possible time. Yeah. So, I don't, yeah. Just and bizarre. there's, is there any way, like you would think the reasonable thing would be to construct a temporary area and, and then, you know, that's inconvenient to get to, but just close by. Yes, yes, exactly. You know. yeah. <laughs> to, to, right, we have tons of floating docks. Take some floating docks that are fairly well built, put them 10 blocks down. Right. With a ramp up to that. That's, a, that's actually a super idea, Chad. Right. This is a super idea. <laughs> because they already said, a dock is staying. A dock is the public dock, and and it was just recently rebuilt. So why not attach a temporary dock to a dock? Yeah, that the year round people can stay at. Um. Uh, and anyway, is is are these spaces like, uh, I don't know, like a a mobile home lot where is it like rent controlled and you you're. You're set on how much, so is that going to go uh, away? It, <laughs> oh no, the, the the rates can be changed every year. Okay, so it's like. But it's I, I, like I was at a meeting with uh, the parks department, and people were saying, "Oh, when you build a new marina, are you going to triple the rates?" And they said, "No, this is the way the city works when it's doing rates for something. We take the total of all the rates of all the local marinas." all the local marinas, like in the tri-state area, add them together, divide them up by how many marinas were added into this total. Oh. And that's our rate. So it's so an that, exact average. Okay. It, 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 okay. So that, that, I mean, that means that it's going to be a beautiful marina. Assuming it's, it comes in on time. <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, you Is know, there, what, 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 what are you, <laughs> What are your options? My options are the city has a tiny little marina above the bridge. 
they said it might be possible that your boat could go there because it's small. We can't take any of the big boats in the marina, yeah. but we don't do winter storage. So you'd have to find another place to put your boat for the winter. Um, but I'm sort of hoping in the meeting Thursday, the fact that the marina would be empty for a year, right. that there's a way for them to rethink that. Right. But, or temporary, uh, temporary stop. I mean, like, I don't know. It just seems so obvious that do you make some... Well, cities work in strange ways. There was a notice <laughs> I... when, when Dennis and I came home, there was a notice on our door that the school on the corner here, the scaffolding was up for four years. The building, they cleaned the building, they redid all the windows, the scaffold came down. Look, the building was beautiful. Notice on the door. Uh, it's kind of our attention that there are some loose tiles on the roof. And the scaffolding is being put back up. For how long? It'll take six months to get bids. To get bids. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then a year and a half to two years to fix the roof. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, so that's... Get me up there with some Bondo. I'll fix it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> put a top over it. <laughs> Right Just get a sign that says, watch out for falling tiles. You've been warned. Oh, my gosh. Is there, so is there any, um, like, meeting that you can, it almost feels like someone was part of some committee and was like, yeah, they're, kick them out, sp spend four years making it. Do you think you could, like, show up to the city hall and demand oh, you know, that they make temporary yes, space? Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, that's who will decide. Uh, At the meeting. I, I guess what we'll think Thursday night. And also, the other thing is, you, you, because we've been through other things like this before, there's not a lot of sympathy from right. the, the community. They go, right. oh, those rich people. Yes. Right. Who oh, you don't have a place book. to store your bone. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that is depressing. That it is, is so it depressing. Is, it is depressing. And you, so what is happening with you? What up things is happening for uh, you? Let me think. Uh, not a lot. Um, the, the Minecraft update came out last week. Um, I think it, it actually came out on Wednesday. So it had been out by the time we recorded last week. Um, and so my life has just been recording video after video after video. Uh, because now, did you have a preview? Did you have a uh, know some of the changes? Yes. So we get um, so this is available for anyone. Um, there's two versions of Minecraft, and it is insane because they are literally two completely different games that are the same game. There's the Java edition and the Bedrock edition. Both editions will come out with um, on the Java edition. They're called snapshots, and then on the Bedrock Edition, their development builds. So you'll get development previews. Um, so we, you know, we had a very, very, very good idea of what was going to be in the the snapshots, or going to be in the release. But still, once it's out, it's better to have fresh videos. You don't want a video from, you know, I might have covered a feature two months ago when it was in a development build, but people want, like, the freshest video, the newest video, and, and with everything in it. Um, and so I've just been making <laughs> video after video after video after video. Um, oh and I've started gosh. TikTok on, uh, for OMG Craft. And that's been going really good. Um, the TikTok account. Uh, that, that, that's where they're one minute long? So TikTok just released uh, a few weeks ago three minute long videos. Oh, okay. But it's not for everybody. So I actually got a little notification that said the OMG Craft account can do three minute videos, which uh, the Gizwiz one still can't. Uh, so I, it's, I guess it's based off of the the account. Um, but it's insane because, like I mentioned when we covered TikTok in in uh, for the Crappy Corner. Uh, you're, you have a page and you just swipe through and you don't know what you're going to get. So it's all up to the algorithm to suggest videos and to get video views. So like one of my videos has almost a million views on it. And then, you know, two videos later oh I have like 6,000 views here. I can show it to you here. 
Holy um, cow. Yeah, it's insane. I, I'm, it's been super fun to, uh, to make these. So here, I'm getting it focused there. So these are my videos. You can see this one right here has Oh my God, 883,000. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then that one has a lot too. And then that one, you know, is just chilling. I don't know if I can see that. There about 7,000 views. Um, wow. But yeah, so this is, these are the videos I've been making on TikTok. And it's interesting because there was that almost, like to me, that is just an insane number, just an absolutely insane number of, of views. And still that only translated to like 7,000 followers. So <laughs> it's, it's really interesting how the numbers are working. They're, they're there, there's numbers there, but they're all yeah. very, they're very fickle. You know, they watched the video and they moved on where you know, oh, on, I see, I see. On YouTube or, you know, almost anywhere else, you get that many views, you're going to have this, you know, huge spike in subscribers or followers. And so all, getting an almost million viewed video um, didn't get that many followers. You know, this is just not the, not, it's not how it works on TikTok. You just kind of right. keep scrolling after you wow. see something you like. Yeah, they're all in portrait style. You can do landscape, um, but... Those don't do well. <laughs> it's not. Oh, that's, oh, not, that's interesting. Oh, that's right. Because almost yeah. everybody's watching on a phone. Yeah. So, like, you know, I can play this. Uh, you know, this is what the the video that has almost a million views looks like. It's it takes up the entire phone, and I made sure I played Minecraft in this mode where the video was really, you know, my game window was super duper tall. And, uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I, yeah, I, I wanted to make sure that I could see the context of it. I just didn't, I didn't record it in, you know, widescreen and then crop it. I actually recorded it in this weird mode. Um, that way, like, see that menu that just popped up. That menu would be all on screen and things like that. So anyway, um, that's I guess that's what's been going. You're on. a busy guy. That's what's been. Churning and yet, over here. He has enough time to do the Gizwiz <laughs> show. <laughs> I'll always have time for the Gizwiz. Always, thank, always. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's uh, jump into some gadgets. Okay, let, let's jump in. Okay, so last week we had that uh, extension from the Cube from uh, Anchor, which came out in December, but these came out uh, this month, and one of them is coming out next month, and this is what it's all about. Anchor has a line of very small charges called the Nano Series, and they just introduced this June the Nano 2 Series. Now, I had a Nano 1. I couldn't find it here, and I realize it's on the boat, but I have another IQ3. This is an IQ3 charger from Anchor, and here it is up here, uh, $46, and it is a 60-watt charger okay so now the nano 2 they say is up to 59 percent smaller ta -da! wow this one is 65 watts what okay fold out plug and the technology is, I have to look here, GAN2 technology, and GAN stands for gallium nitrate, okay? At MAD, we use psyllium nitrate. But this is <laughs> gallium nitrate. And let me just go to another thing up here on the on uh, Amazon. This is a very old computer and takes forever. Okay. That one was $54. Look at this. The new one... This is the 45 watt, okay? The 45 watt is just $36. And the 65 watt is 40 bucks. All right? And it's, uh, they will start delivering in July. Okay? So these are really neat. 45 watt and the 65 watt do. The 45 watt can run the air. The big guy, the 65 watt, can run the MacBook Air, the 13 inch Pro, the fast charge Pic Pixel Book, Surface Pro, Dell XPS laptop, 
it, it's really amazing. So we went from, what was this, $54 for 60 watts, and this new guy is $40, 65 watts, and they're both IQ3. Did I miss anything? Uh, no. The little guy, the littlest guy is 30 bucks. But, you know, go for the 65 watt because the 45 watt is $36 and the 65 watt is $4 more. Uh, but that, this is coming in July. Okay. The other two are out already. The, uh, 45 watt and the, uh, and the 30 watt. Okay. And I should say both of these came from, uh, Anchor. They wanted, they, they knew I was doing a video and they said, Oh, let me, we'll send you two of them. I guess they didn't have the 45 in stock yet. That's it. Charged up and lower price. What could be better than that? That is awesome. Recently, I just took my computer out and I have the MacBook Air. So that little 45 watt one would work on it. I think it re only requires a 30 watt uh, charger. Yeah, but do the extra four bucks and get the 65. Yeah. Watt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. The 65 MacBook would charge Air. like anything. <laughs> and and the 13 inch Pro. Pixelbook, Surface Pro, and it said most USB-C powered laptops it can run. Yeah, yeah 50, I, I think I might have said 59% smaller, so 58% smaller. <laughs> yeah, I, I have that brick specifically. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's insane. That is crazy. That is really, really cool. Yeah. Pre-order, pre-order. Uh, the pre-order yeah, is sold out. What on oh, earth? oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, right. Uh, that is cool. Well, that's, they, that's they might neat. be, they might be expecting more because when I looked last week on Amazon, it said the 65 watt will start shipping July 5th, but now it's saying shipping July like 17th. So I guess that's possibly when the second shipment of the, will, will come in. But uh, I think they do have a hit on their hands with the Nano 2. Yeah, definitely. Here it is on the Amazon, too. It's interesting because it says in stock soon instead of like pre-order or anything like that. It, just, it knows that it's out of stock, but you can still add it to your car. I love the 12 ratings that have already. Wait a second. <laughs> they must have gotten a review unit as well. Because uh, these are people actually taking photos. Yeah, I, you know what? That my guess is that people who do this, yeah, uh, like us, yeah, uh, yeah. they'll post they, their. If review you were doing there. something, just say yeah. Because I had actually asked them ab about the cube uh, for a travel bit, and they said, "Well, the the cube is good, but it's six months old, don't you?" You want to talk about something new, new? Uh, so that's, that's old news. Our PR department's on to new gadgets. <laughs> Would you like them? Yeah. That's yeah. funny. Thank that's, you. That's Thank great. you. Nano 2. Nano 2. That is a great gadget. Um, well, I took over the second gadget for this week. Um, I mentioned it a few weeks ago that I was super excited about my new bike that uh, took a while to get here. And so I recorded a review, so let's take a look. Hello, this is a review of the Rad Whoa. Rover 5 electric bike. This is the Rad Rover 5 by Rad Power Bikes. This is one of many different bikes that Rad Power Bikes sells. In this edition of the bike, you get a lot of things. The reason that I decided that I wanted to buy this bike is because you really get it all. So we'll start at the front. You have nice wide fat tires. You have a fender and a headlight and this is all included. Then heading up to the handlebars, we have both brakes front and back. You have a throttle on your right hand side to help throttle up the electric motor. You have a seven gear shifter. Then in the center, you have your module, which will tell you all about the bike. Power, Ooh. speed, uh, pedal assist, all that stuff will be displayed on this. 
This phone mount didn't come standard. This is mine. <laughs> this is also mine. These are additions. Uh, then you have your controls. And so you can turn on the bike from here. You can set your pedal assist higher or lower, or you can turn on and off the front light. And you also have a little bell, which is included right here on the handle. Moving to the middle of the bike, we have the battery. This battery can be locked with a key and it can even be removed if you want to charge this battery inside of your house. Then right here is the brains of the whole system. So this is your control board. Then moving up, you have your brake light, which will illuminate when you hold down either of the brakes and you have your default seat. This seat has an integrated handle, so you can pick up this bike. It's rather heavy at 65 pounds. And then to the back of the bike, you have your rear fender. This bike cost $1,700. Why would you be dropping $1,700 on an electric bike? Well, it all goes down to the 750 watt motor in that back tire. This will allow you to pedal while using the electric motor to make your pedaling a lot easier or you could just throttle up and start moving if you wanted to, like an electric motorcycle. So you have five levels of pedal assist. At the lowest level, the bike isn't going to help out a whole lot whenever you are pedaling the bike. At its highest level, level five, the bike will be doing the majority of the work to get you moving. And like I mentioned, you could always just throttle up to move if you don't want to work. The max speed when you unbox the bike is 20 miles an hour, but you can go into the settings and change that to 25 miles an hour after you have it set up. The maximum payload is 275 pounds and the maximum mileage is 45 miles per battery charge. Let me show you what it would be like to actually ride the bike. Here is the main screen. Up in the corner, you have how much charge you have. Then you have your odometer, and that can be changed to a trip view if you use the controls on the side. In the middle, you have your speed, and then down here, you have your pedal assist. That's what pass means. So I can set that from zero all the way up to five, where it's really gonna help out a lot. And at the very bottom, you have your watts. So if I want to ride, I could either start pushing on the pedal or I could take the throttle and just turn it and off I go. So we've changed locations and time of day to show you a few things with the lights when it comes to this bike. First off, I want to show you the brake light. Uh, it's right back here. And so when you, when you hold down the brake lever, it illuminates, which is fantastic. There's also a headlight, which we showed earlier. To turn it on, it's a little bit complicated. You have to press the up and the middle buttons at the same time, and then the headlight will turn on. It's a little complicated. I wish that was a little bit easier. And now you can see the headlight. And this is my biggest gripe, my biggest con with this bike out of the box is that that headlight is very focused. It's not incredibly bright. It looks actually brighter on video than it does in person. And, and, and I really don't like how small of an area it illuminates. So I'm going to be going third party with a different light later on. They do sell an upgraded light, but from reviews, it is also pretty focused. It just happens to be brighter. So that's not what I liked. Uh, whenever the headlight is on, the brake light will stay illuminated and there are modes to turn that into a flashing light. And then when you pull the brake, it will get even brighter. So uh, your brake will still work when the headlight is on. The headlight really is my biggest con. I have a few small little things. I'm not really a big fan of this seat, so I'll be upgrading that. I love the shocks on the front of the bike, but there are no shocks on the back of the bike. So I may be upgrading to a seat post that has an integrated shock. And those, that's, really, that's really all my cons that I have with this bike. Maybe the price, it's a little expensive, uh, but that's really it. For the pros of this bike, it really is just the whole package. It does what it does and it does it really, really well. The pedal assist is absolutely amazing. And I find myself going on incredibly long bike rides. And sometimes maybe even I haven't even pedaled once because I'm just using the throttle the entire time. It really takes a lot of the like 
factors of am I going to get too tired to get back home or is that too far away? Should I just take my car? It takes all of those away and I just love using this bike to bike around. It is so absolutely fun. So there's no one feature that I can really say stands out as a major pro. It's just the entire bike. All in all, I love this bike. It's one of the reasons that I personally purchased this and that this isn't a review unit. This has got me into pedaling around my local area and it makes that super duper easy and efficient. And basically I just never have a bad day with this bike. This is an expensive bike, but I feel like the pros far outweigh the cons and I have just absolutely enjoyed riding it. So I'll get back to it. There we go. Nice. I love those tires too. You can yeah. go over pretty much anything with that. Yes. And that's the big advantage of the, the big fat tires is you can take them off road. I've seen posts of people taking them onto the beach with sand um, and that sort of stuff. Uh, so you can get around with that. Here, here it is. Um, but I think the thing that I personally was worried about when getting this bike was like, what does the pedal assist feel like? What is that? What, how does that work? And what does that seem like? Um, and basically you just start pedaling and like a half second after you pedal, the bike realizes that in that you're pedaling and it'll throttle up. So there'll be a small delay and then you'll get the bike to kind of throttle up for you. Um, so that's kind of the easiest way to describe it. Um, a con that I kind of thought of later was that it, it did end up taking me like a month to get. So <laughs> if you want it quickly, uh, it's probably not going to happen. Um, you can see that the black is, you know, ships in June 30th, um, which I guess isn't, I mean, yeah, I guess, you know. No, it's just two weeks. Two weeks. Um, and same thing with the limited edition forest green, uh, which is the color that I ended up getting. There's a lot of e-bikes out there. And the reason that I went with Rad Power Bikes is one, because they kind of seemed like the standard. Like every review that I was reading on other bikes kept like uh, comparing it back to this bike. <laughs> and, oh, I you. you know, and, and after that had happened, like on the third bike, it was like, well, maybe I should just go, go with that one. Um, my parents have the electric bike and uh, let me see if I can find that. And you can leave them in the dust. <laughs> this bike, so this is really what got me wanting a bike is because I tried theirs. It's much less expensive. Um, the bike that they have was actually cheaper than the um, the 2.0. So they had, where is it? I don't know if they sell it anymore. Uh, it was $100 cheaper uh, than this. So they have a similar bike to, to this one. Uh, this one folds up, which I actually didn't oh, like. Oh, oh. Um, it is kind of cool, but I didn't ever really want to fold up the bike and I felt like it might be a weak point in the bike. And I also did not love the styling. <laughs> <laughs> this bike. Yeah. Um, and the tires are much smaller, right? They're smaller in diameter, but they are fat tire. I think they're a right. little smaller than the one, uh, the, than the Rad Rover 5. But, um, but yeah, they are, they are still fat tire. So this was another one that I was looking at um, for getting, but I ended up getting the, uh, the Rad Rover 5. So yeah. Um, nice. So there you go. Any questions? Do you have any questions? I don't know. No, I think it's super. Awesome. Well, back to you. Uh, okay, we're going to do a what the heck does this gadget do, so take a look. Okie dokie. It's time to play what are these for? Okay, <laughs> the only one in the studio is Dennis. Wow. And there they are. Salt and pepper shakers? Any idea what they're for? Uh, salt and pepper shaker. Oh, salt and pepper shaker. Okay. Dennis and I, okay, we would have won match game. I'm going to put them down, of course. 
All right. Yeah. All right. Now. I feel like something's got to come out of their nose. Maybe I'll show you the box. It can't be that. They are called Gramps and Granny. You, you folks might like this, Chad. Oh. Uh, <laughs> eyeglass holders from uh, Joe Bar. Oh, that's cute. They're cute, aren't they? And no. the object here is that they'll be so cute that when you put your glasses down, you'll want to put them on these guys. <laughs> it's very funny. I guess the glasses sort of hang down in the front. Oh. They, they look better yeah. on this. Yeah. I have an idea that they might have put a little... Suppose you just put the... <laughs> Front on the box, the the, they have a little blue pill. Oh, uh, okay. They... We could try that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, with, uh, that's better. Oh, that's better. Oh, yeah. That. Oh, you can put, the, you yeah. can put yeah. the stems yeah. in the back like that. Well, I guess it like that. Anyway. It looks better like that. It's an yeah. easy way to <laughs> find your glasses and to remember which one is mom's and which one is dad's. And they're inexpensive. Uh, um, I got them on Amazon. Uh, 13 bucks for a pair. And they're ceramic. And it's a set of two. So it's perfect for the bedroom nightstand or bathrooms while bathing. All right. That's it. Gramps and Granny eyeglass holders. <laughs> Where do you find stuff like this on other shows? <laughs> and aren't you glad you don't? And Those Jeff Adams fun. says, with nostril-equipped technology. <laughs> I was convinced something was going to come out of their nostril. I was like, oh, do, you, oh, oh. do you screw it onto a uh, toothpaste oh, that, tube? Oh, that's then... funny. Yeah, or, sh uh, or shampoo. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I thought that, that was going to happen. Yeah. Those are adorable. Yeah, they're very cute, aren't they? Yeah. 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 That's so funny. Perfect. Yeah. A great no, gift uh, if you're visiting old folks. Uh, yeah. There's definitely some people watching the show that are thinking, oh, that would be perfect for fill in the blank. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Well, that brings us to, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. that brings us to. But you might want it at Chad's. Crappy Corner. Get it. Okay. I didn't plan on this, but maybe before I cut to my video, uh, we play another little what the heck is it. So here's the gadget. Oh. Okay. Any idea what this gadget does? You wrap cables. Oh, it's a dispenser. Yeah, there's a liquid there's, in there. I, yeah, I can see there's a liquid in it. You don't hit it and have something squirt out of it? Well, you got it. You got it. Okay. We will cut to the <laughs> review. Hey, Diggy D. We are back with another Alibaba gadget. And this week, I have this thing. Ooh la la. What the heck is it? Well, maybe the location gives a little bit away or the fact that I have some other hand soap over here in the background. Well, this is a soap dispenser and it promises to dispense flower-like adorable soap. It dispenses using foam, so foam soap. So don't get the normal like, you know, gel foam or gel hand soap. You have to get um, foaming hand soap. So we will just open it up, take this other bottle of soap, and pour it in. You, of course, you can get, you know, refills, but I just tend to, I, I, I don't really use foaming hand soap in my house. Pour that in there. Looks like it holds, you know, it could even hold more than what was originally in this dial uh, container. Put this on top, screw it down, and I'm sure that I'm gonna have to give it a few pumps to get it to activate. There you go. Look at that oh, flower. how funny. So, <laughs> oh, didn't oh, that's really very work so funny. on the oh, second Oh, that's one. very funny. Uh, Charlie said, oh, I need some of that. Is that whipped cream? Just, right. <laughs> oh. Okay. 
Well, the second uh, pump, it didn't, it didn't really work out super great. So let's see if I, how easy it is to kind of reset this. There we go. A great Looks way like to get kids to wash their hands. Off. Yeah, I was thinking so about that. Time. There you go. Oh, it's kind of wow. adorable. Okay, apparently you cannot go <laughs> twice in a row. That is, that is not allowed. Uh, I feel like it kind of gives you a small amount of soap. It doesn't give you just like enough really for me. I, I want more soap on my hand whenever I wash my hand. We'll try it one more time. That's how much soap you get. It's not horrible, but uh, I would I would prefer more soap. So there you go. The flower dispensing soap dispenser. <laughs> uh, so, how much would you pay? Uh, Alibaba? Oh, it's going to be cheap. I'm going to say it so, was yeah, 225 I'll give you a hint. It, Yeah, it was one, oh. one of the more expensive gadgets that... Oh. Yeah. It was a little... $3.99. You are so close. $3.84. Yeah. All right. And you could get it in all these different colors. Now, it did not come with soap. So if you thought, you know, there's this label on here. Is it going to come filled? It did not. Uh, mine did not. So you could even get it as a jewel if, if you want. What is this one? Wow. Like? Perfect. So anyway, that's, that's it. Um, I've seen these. I actually, I think I saw this on TikTok. It was one of the reasons I was like, huh, I kind of want to go try, try that one out. Um, I didn't see like it from Alibaba. I just saw people using a flowering soap dispenser and I was like, that's gotta be on Alibaba. <laughs> so I went and, uh, and found one. So there you go. This one isn't so crappy, um, cheap, and it took about a month to arrive. <laughs> so, oh, okay. so order, order it now. Um, and, and of course it's most likely on, um, Amazon too, if you don't want to wait around. It uh, looks like Nick with a C is sharing a GIF. I've seen this before. One second, let me just refresh and get it to start over. So this is, oh. this looks like way cooler than mine. Wow. Yeah, yeah, isn't that neat? To create wow. a uh, flower. That one's gotta be like 30 bucks. Right, <laughs> right, that one's not cheap. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that one's, I was kind of hoping it is funny that it wasn't able to do two in a row. That was uh, yeah, not it's a possible. Disappointing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. Uh, the flowering soap dispenser. And with that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play in this gadget warehouse. Popcorn. All right, so not even a one minute warehouse video from anybody. <gasps> so what? I did my own, and let's take a look. You know how much I love trains. Well, here's a great looking train model. Now, this is a gadget warehouse. It's a redo. Pro Chad probably doesn't know about it because I did this 11 years ago. Oh, yeah, I don't remember that. And even then it was a revisit because this is uh, from the mid-1990s, okay? And I'll show you what it does. And to show you what it does, I need my phone and we'll see... Oh. Is it a telephone? Not a, not a train soap dispenser. And I hope it still works. No. I put new batteries in it, and I clean the contacts. And we'll see. <laughs> Isn't that neat? Great effects. Meanwhile, the person on the other side. 
Isn't that neat? It's from Telemania. I believe they're out of business. And it is the locomotive telephone, a reproduction of a 1925 locomotive, the Crescent, the, the Crescent 1925. Now, there's a nice backstory to this because I just love this. And I went back to the booth a bunch of times. It was CES, probably early 90s up to mid-95. And uh, th they make every kind of telephone. And I said to the guys, that is a beautiful model. And the guy said, this is what happened. Because I asked about all the detailing. How, how could you do that for a phone? And they said... We found the company that made this as a desktop model. <laughs> and we said, we would like to buy the uh, uh, plans so that we can make our own phone. We can build a phone into it. And since you have all the diagrams and, and the plans of how to make it and cast it, it'll be way easier for us. There'll be no uh, R&D. It'll just be... Uh, getting the phone parts inside. And so that's how they got to make it. So if you're a kill killjoy, you can switch it to uh, a regular sound, a regular phone ring. And the person on the other end of the phone, they just hear a phone ring. Okay. <laughs> I don't get <laughs> You can see how old it is. There's a, there's a uh, button down here. If you want pulse <laughs> or tone dialing. <laughs> Um, it's still for sale, like on eBay and stuff for, oh, like 40 bucks and maybe $10 shipping, but that's a Telemania, the Crescent 1925 locomotive telephone. Get me Amtrak. <laughs> what? They're out of business too? That is amazing. That is so crazy. It's neat, isn't it? And there is and a lot. Available still on eBay. This yes. they must have sold a ton of these. I think they did. I think they did because it, it, it's it's very well made and it's yeah. the sound effects are wonderful. And I, I sent you a link for I, I I really should order one just to see. It says brand new in a box. What? Yeah, exactly. This is this, you. Buy the whole stock if it's real, and then just resell them on eBay. Oh, that's a that's a good idea. Estimate. <laughs> oh, I didn't I didn't estimate ship. Maybe the shipping cost is like fifty dollars. But how could it be? How could it be six dollars? I, I don't know. This this and store does look very shady. Let's be honest. Does doesn't it? <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, there was also something at the bottom. I think it says. Uh, some of these, oh, they, uh, oh, brand new, not refurbished. Okay, here's the disclaimer, Chad. Some information on this page may have been supplied by a third-party content supplier. We're not responsible for data or image errors. Availability is not guaranteed. Oh my! Call us or email us to check stock before placing your order. Okay, what? Huh? Yeah. So they're. This is like a drop shipper, is what it yeah. is. They, but still, in all, how could anybody make a penny? I don't know. Oh, whoa, anyway. wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, here. There's. Did there's, you put it in your button? I, I clicked add to cart, and I have found an error. This error item is no longer available. Oh. Okay. <sighs> okay. Because okay. I was just thinking, you know, I should buy another one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> eBay may have to be your only option. Yeah, yeah. It is the first thing when you search train phone uh, that pops up. There's, <laughs> there's really no other options out no, there. No, it, it, it's, it's so well done. Well, actually, I, I do have another one up on the shelf. I did buy, uh, I had one at Madden one here. That is awesome. What a cool gadget. That is awesome. With that, let's move on to the letter. Now, 
All right, talk about cool gadgets. John Cisco says, Dick, you might like this. It could be your next boat. And maybe you can show the video that's from the company. It's from a company called Sea Legs. And I actually covered them for the boating magazine. They've been out uh, maybe 20 years. I, I thought <laughs> they didn't stand a chance to stay in business. They are doing very well. So let's see what <laughs> Sea Legs is. Okay, dokie. Here we go. Oh, this, okay, this is the long review. That's okay. Oh, oops. Here, I have the other one up. If... Oh, yeah, do, do, do okay. the other one. The other one. Boop, here we go. Dry. Oh. What? What? And then you get to the beach, you drive the boat into the water. And, and so they're always return. there? The wheels. Now, do you have to buy that boat, or can you have it retrofitted onto any no, boat? No, no, this is what you're buying. Oh, my gosh. You build the boat's car. <laughs> and and when they first started, it was like a little 16-foot uh, thing. And now, when I was on the... It's Sea Legs is a company, sealegs.com. I was on their website. They're building, like... A dozen different models. This is a little cabin cruise that they're building. Huh. And then when you're done, you just drive it back. You drive it up. Well, I think they'll show you in a minute. I think the video is only a minute. Yeah, you go. You can go to the end. Uh, oh, yeah. You so lower you can, that front wheel. Oh, that's so funny. So that it'll catch the land when it starts to go up. There you go. <laughs> Whoa. You know what they're thinking? I don't need no boat basin or did it? No, you're absolutely right. I don't need I don't need no marina. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Anywhere I go, I have a marina. <laughs> I wonder how long you can store it on the uh, wheels. That's interesting. Oh, well, what? Oh, I think they're putting it down, I guess, so they can like camp out on the beach. <laughs> That's insane. That's crazy. Isn't that a riot? Sea legs. You must look weird on the highway. I'll tell oh you. Oh my that. god. <laughs> I would imagine I would this is there's no way you could take this on a real road. Right? You, you uh, couldn't. It, it needs to have a bumper. You need to have a, like a bumper and headlights to be on a main road, but what? So I guess. <sighs> Well, so you you think you would drive it? I guess you would have to drive. If you would, you would have to have basically to a ramp uh, at your own property or something. Because I wonder how if it if they have like a way right, to get I this. Do not, I, I do not see a place like for a license plate. Yeah, this is definitely not street legal. Right. But it's very convenient. So you have to have like the perfect situation of you have land with a shed and an easy ramp out of the water, and then you can just easily store your boat. Yeah, um, that, that that you're right. Or if you live like on on a, on a dirt road, you could drive it th down a dirt road right. where there's no police or anything, and then just drive it to the nearest beach. Right. <laughs> but it's pretty. It's it's. <laughs> Pretty neat. I, lo I love that been, you saw like this good. years ago because I would have had the same thought. Yeah, wow, that's interesting. I'm sure y'all would do just great in the <laughs> in the real world. Yes, I know. They're yeah. never going to make it. Yeah, I know, I know. Lots of luck with that product. <laughs> exactly. Who wants to buy a boat that only has, <laughs> that has these things strapped on the edge of them? Um, uh, anyway, John Cisco, thank you. That gave us a real chuckle, and and I'm I'm actually glad Cisco, uh, S U S C O, John. Um, 
it, it's astounding. I, I had no idea that they were so successful yeah. that they have an entire line. And I think they have an industrial line too. So that's crazy. Sea legs. legs. And, that is, that oh, is, and before I forget, don't forget, we still are looking for videos. So now you have some extra days. This is a Tuesday taping only. Okay. We'll be back to Thursdays next week. Uh, so you have like nine days to make a video, anything that, uh, involves a gadget. Okay. Crazy gadgets, you know, old people, you put glasses on whatever it is, boats, you can drive up on land. Uh, no, it, it can be the most minor things. Your old Atari computer, you, for some reason you can't throw out, make a one to three minute video horizontal and just make sure we can hear your voice and see the gadget. And put it up on YouTube. You can click on listed. That way only people with the URL can see it and, and send us the URL. Mail at gizwiz.tv. And we show 99% of all the videos we get. And you will get an autographed copy of, I always, made, oh, oh, I did have it here. Uh, you will get an autographed copy of August Mad and then the King Kong Godzilla issue. <laughs> so get your video in. Okay. Do it Mail now. at gizwiz.tv. Huge thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. Uh, however you give, whatever you give, however long you've given, we really, really, really appreciate y'all's generosity. Thank you so much. If you enjoy the Gizwiz, please consider giving back over patreon.com slash gizwiz. Or if you want to give via PayPal, head on over to our website, gizwiz.tv, click on the Patreon tab at the top of the website, and there's a PayPal link there if you want to give that way. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are incredible. Thank you. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you can watch the show live, just about, every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. If there's ever a schedule change, we'll try to let you know ahead of time, and it'll be at the top of the website. The website is live when we are live, so just head on over there, join the chat room if you feel so inclined. If we're not live, it'll be the most recent episode. You can subscribe to the show so you don't miss anything or check out our previous episodes there on the website. Head on over to gizwiz.biz, that's Dickie D's website. He writes up articles about all the gadgets that we cover, so if you're ever looking for any of the gadgets that we talked about, head on over to gizwiz.biz. I love these search features, right? underneath all of these. I use it all the time to search for gadgets so you can find whatever you're looking for. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? It's a game show online that you can participate in. It's new every two months, and this is the gadget. The whole gadgets are it's time to figure it out. Uh, and this is uh, obvious to me. Uh, it's a very rare game of uh, Connect 2. So if you want to play, you know, you just play right there. If you think you know what this is, get a guessin'. There's six Mad Magazines for correct answers and 12 Mad Magazines for funny, clever, hilarious, or interesting answers. So get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. And this is the Mad Magazine you're playing for. So get a guessin'. Also, get a recording for your, <laughs> <laughs> for your Gadget Warehouse videos. We appreciate it. Uh, that about wraps it up for us. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs>